Hi, my name is Alex with Tech Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be showing you how to administer and configure your Scrum board settings. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. And before we jump into the video, three quick announcements. Number one, this video is sponsored by my good friends over at Resolution. Make sure you check out their apps in the link in the description below. Go show them some love. They have a really cool app called the Out of Office Assistant, which I highly recommend you set up. If you've ever experienced a situation where somebody went on vacation or somebody's out sick and your Jira issues are in limbo because the assignee's gone, well, the out of office assistant lets you set up a schedule, it lets you set up a rotation so that whenever this phenomenon happens, your tickets aren't left out to hang for dry. Check them out, link in the description, go show them some love, go show them some support, go show them the power of the internet. Second, this video is part of the Summer of Atlassian 2.0 and it is more critical than ever to make sure that you smash that subscribe button so we can crush our goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of summer. And then make sure you share this video with everybody you know as we want as many eyeballs watching these videos. And then finally, the Jira guy and I have launched our official new channel called The Jira Life. And so make sure you go check out The Jira Life very, very different types of videos, but we are very, very excited to bring you even more content to the Atlassian community. And you get to spend an hour once a week with two experts. And so make sure you go to that channel, subscribe. We are trying to hit a thousand subscribers as quickly as possible. So go smash that subscribe button over there. And now into Jira. All right, so inside of Jira, we're gonna be focusing on a company managed software project. And so I'm just gonna pick this project right here and we are going to go to our board settings. Now there's two ways for you to get to your board settings. You can get to it from the backlog or from the active sprint. So it doesn't matter which way you get there, but just click on the ellipses on the far right. Again, you're only gonna see this in the backlog or the active sprint click on those board settings. And now let's take a deep dive into these settings here. Now we may have to break this up into a part one and part two because there's quite a few settings here. And so we're just gonna kind of roll with it and see how far we can get. So first under general, this is probably gonna be the area where you're gonna spend the second most amount of time in all these settings. The general settings here are important for you to set up correctly at the beginning. I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks and some like behaviors that happen depending on what settings you configure here or don't configure. So I'm gonna to try to kind of answer some of the more common questions of like, why is this happening? Or how, why is this phenomenon occurring? So I'm gonna to try to answer those as I'm also explaining the purpose behind these settings. So first, when you create a brand new board, it is going to inherit the key. That is the, the three letters or three to 10 letters, whatever you pick for your project name, it gets a key. And so that key is gonna become the name of your board. So if you don't want that, if you don't want your name to, of the board to be just a key, or maybe you want it to be your team name or something, you can come in here and basically click on this little pencil and you can change your board to whatever you want. Next up, we have the administrators. So these are the people that can make the changes to the board. And so why this isn't the first thing, I don't know. But if you want other people to be able to come in here and make these kind of changes, rename your board, rename the columns, change the order of the columns, those kind of things, then they're going to want to grant administrators or additional administrators in this section here. Now, the location, I would not touch this. The location is kind of interesting inside of Jira because we are really dealing with two things. We deal with the project and we deal with the location. So the location is the actual home. It is where in the Jira universe is this board located? That's very critical because down below, we're gonna to get to the projects in the board, which most of the time they should be one-to-one. -one. But if, if you're running a rather sophisticated Jira operation, that might not be the case. But the location, you have to make sure you know exactly one place so that it is always in that one location. The filter. This is probably the most commonly configured item that you will do as a board administrator, making sure that your board is the correct filter, that it has a correct criteria, is probably one of the more common changes that I see happening at the board setting level. And let me explain what I mean by that. If you look down here, we're gonna skip down a little bit. If you come down to this filter query, you're gonna see that the filter query equals project equals my project and order by rank. And this is great when you have one board. And for most people, this is awesome, this is all you need. One board, one project, 
you're done. Any issue that goes into that project will automatically show up on that board. But if you're a little bit more of an advanced player here, you can actually manipulate your filter. You can add criteria. You can do basically like any JQL. You can add filters and conditions. Maybe only you maybe only want issues to show up from a certain release or from a certain component, or maybe you want to pull in two, three different projects. Well, you can do that by modifying your filter query. And so if you click on this edit filter query, you will then be able to basically change. It's it's just JQL. So you can either type it up here or you can switch to basic. And then you just do the conditions, the criteria, whatever you want, and hit save. Now, if this button doesn't hit save for you, that means that you're not the author. That means if I go back, and you do have to, unfortunately, because of the navigation of this, hit back to get back to your board. Otherwise, you got to go back to your project, get back into your project, get back into the board center. So it's kind of weird. Just hit the back button. I find that to be the most effective. But what I'm trying to explain, though, is that there is an edit section right here. And so if this section here says no shares. That means that only the author of the filter, which is most likely going to be the administrator, not all the time, but most likely, is the only person that's allowed to make changes and save them. Everybody else can make changes, so everybody can click. Anybody else that has access to this setting here can click on Edit Filter Query, make the change, but they have to hit Save As. They have to basically save it as a second filter. Then they have to go back to the board, come to this Save Filter, click on the little pencil, and change to that other filter. But there's a huge problem with this, and that is most people forget that when you make a new filter, by default, it's private. And that basically means is that if you, like let's just say somebody left your company and you want to update the filter because for whatever reason you want to do that, well, you make a new filter because you can't edit somebody else's filter. There's a workaround though, another video from like a year ago that I posted, right? But let's assume that you just want to change the filter where you're like, okay, so you'll make your change, you hit the save as, give it a new name. You come in here, you change it. So that's looking at that new filter and then the board's gone for everybody. Well, that's because now, if you look at your shares, this probably went to no shares because you didn't open up that filter to your project or to your team or to your organization or whatever setting you want to do. So make sure that when you, if you do go down this route, that you essentially update your share permissions for that new filter when you apply it here. But that's essentially what's happening here. This place is, allows you to basically change filters for whatever reason. I don't typically change filters. I usually just edit the existing filter, but I'm also the author of them, so that makes it really easy. You can, alternatively, add extra editors to a filter. So if you're thinking ahead, I would definitely give like your site admins the ability to edit filters. That way, in case we ever leave or change teams or projects or whatever, you, you don't like set up your team for failure there. So I would do that there. Your shares here is going to tell you who can see this board. So this is critical. This basically means anybody that has access to this project is going to be able to see the board, which is good. This is typically what you want, but you can alter, you can limit. But I will tell you this. I will tell you this very, very important information. You could restrict who can see the board. That's going to be possible through your filter. But if they can still see the project, they're going to see the issues. They just won't see them in the board view, but they can still click on issues here and then still see the issue. So you're, if you really truly want to lock things up, you're going to have to make like a whole new Jira project with a whole new board, with a whole like confounded set of permissions for the right users. Otherwise, while you can lock up a board and people won't be able to access the board, they're still going to be able to see the data in it. They just won't be able to like, you know, make messes with your board and, and update those statuses from there. They can still come in here and update the status for the issues here, but just wanted to caution you there because not a lot of people know that that's actually happening there. <clears throat> we already talked about the edits, which is basically who can make changes to the filter. This right here is basically a shortcut. This is just showing you what's in the filter query without you having to click on the filter query. The using rank, this is very important. This is dictated by your filter query. And you can see here that it says order by rank. Your order by rank is important because it's what allows you to rank your backlog. It's basically what allows you to take an item from your backlog and shuffle them around and have Jira remember them. You could alternatively, if you wanted to set, set your backlog by priority, you can change this filter here to not be order by rank, but rather order by priority. 
but you do lose your ability to rank. So you lose your ability to move things freely about the cabin. You are restricted to having it only by that condition of that field that you selected. So be very careful there because you do you can't it's you can't have your cake and eat it. You have to pick one or the other. And then finally, you'll see the projects in the board. This right here is probably where most people get into the most amount of trouble here. When you get a little confident in your Jira skills, you tend to add more projects. You, for whatever reason, you, you want to bring in issues from other projects and see them in this view. But then all of a sudden, Jira breaks. The ability to use the board, the ability to plan a sprint is usually the most common culprit. The ability to plan a sprint breaks. And that is because as you pull issues from other projects to be displayed on this board, you need to ensure that the users that have access to this project can also now access the other projects. And this is even more self-evident when you're dealing with like your Scrum Masters, because if your Scrum Masters don't have the ability to manage sprints in the other projects, they're not going to have the ability to manage a sprint in this board here because it's, it's like a domino effect. All the other projects have to also kind of be configured to favor that user that's trying to do those things. So be very careful if you do start including projects, other projects in your board, because it just tends to complicate things a little bit more. And that's it for this section. That basically covers the general. Make sure you come back. We are going to be breaking this out into multiple videos because I am realizing that this is a lot of information to cover and I can basically do like a one or two hour video of all this. So we're just going to break it up into bite sized digestible pieces for you. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Help us hit that goal of 10,000 subscribers. Make sure you share this video with your board admin, your Jira admins, everybody else that you know. Help us double our views on this video and help more people learn and benefit from this video. And then a couple of the last final announcements. If you haven't subscribed over to the Jira Life, link is in the description. Make sure you go and help support our new endeavor. We are aggressively trying to monetize and grow that channel to a thousand subscribers. So go and subscribe over there. And then finally, a special thanks again to my friends over at Resolution. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much for sponsoring the channel. You all watching this video, please go make sure you check out the link in the description below. Go test out and use their out of office assistant plugin in their Elastic Marketplace. It's an awesome thing. It's going to help you make sure you always have somebody accountable and somebody owning your issues and you're going to minimize the chances of your issues falling into a limbo state where nobody knows what's going on. Check them out. Go show them some love. Thanks. And I'll see you in the next one. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 don't need